Hey, Explorers! Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're embarking on an awe-inspiring journey to dive deep into the enigmatic world of ancient Egyptian pyramids. These architectural marvels have puzzled historians and archaeologists for centuries, leaving us with more questions than answers. Join us as we explore the controversial theories and groundbreaking discoveries surrounding the construction techniques and workforce of these colossal structures. Let's start by delving into the historical context. Before we start our journey, hit the red button which is no more red to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for all notifications. The earliest pyramid construction utilized locally quarried limestone for the core and high-quality Tura limestone for the outer casing. The precision and durability of these structures continue to amaze us. But how were they built? Herodotus and Diodorus Siculus provided intriguing accounts of possible construction methods, such as the use of a Herodotus machine or earthen ramps, but the truth remains elusive. The workforce debate adds another layer of intrigue to the pyramid enigma. Did slaves or skilled laborers construct these wonders? Recent archaeological evidence points to a highly skilled workforce comprising tens of thousands of workers camped near the pyramids. These skilled artisans were paid or worked as a form of tax payment. Fascinatingly, workers' cemeteries discovered in 1990 support this theory, offering an insight into the lives of those who built these iconic structures. Pseudoscientific Theories Pseudoscientific Theories, a curious twist in the tale. Some intriguing but largely discredited ideas include the geopolymer hypothesis by Joseph Davidovitz. He suggested the blocks were not carved but made of limestone concrete. However, this theory fails to explain the massive granite stones used in the pyramids. Nonetheless, it sparked an interesting debate among experts. Let's journey to the quarries. Egyptians use copper chisels, drills, and saws to cut softer stones, but how did they handle the hard stones like granite? Archaeologists believe pounding with dolerite, drilling, and sawing with abrasive materials like quartz sand played a role. The harder stones, such as granite, granodiorite, cyanite, and basalt, cannot be cut with copper tools alone, instead, they were worked with time-consuming methods like pounding with dolerite, drilling, and sawing with the aid of an abrasive, such as quartz sand. Blocks were transported by sledge, likely lubricated by water. Leveling the foundation may have been accomplished by use of water-filled trenches as suggested by Mark Lehner and I.S. Edwards or through the use of a crude square level, and experienced surveyors. Transporting the massive stones was a monumental challenge. The Diary of Mera, discovered in 2013, sheds light on how limestone blocks were transported by boat from quarries to the pyramid construction site. Now, let's explore the mysteries of ramps. While there's evidence supporting their use, which type of ramp was employed remains uncertain. Large straight ramps have been largely discredited due to their impracticality. Experiments done by the Obayashi Corporation, with concrete blocks 0.8 meters square by 1.6 meters long and weighing 2.5 tons, showed how 18 men could drag the block over a 1 in 4 incline ramp, at a rate of 18 meters per minute. This idea was previously described by John Bush in 1977, and is mentioned in the closing remarks section of Parry's book. Vitruvius Indo Architectura described a similar method for moving irregular weights. It is still not known whether the Egyptians used this method but the experiments indicated could have worked using stones of this size. 
Egyptologists generally accept this for the 2.5 ton blocks mostly used but do not agree over the methods used for the 15 plus ton and several 70 to 80 ton blocks. Other possibilities include zigzagging ramps, ramps supported by the superstructure, and internal ramps. The latter ties into Jean-Pierre Houdin's internal ramp hypothesis, suggesting an innovative way to move the massive stones inside the pyramid using a rotating crane. Archaeologist Seijiki Yoshimura's ambitious project aims to recreate a pyramid on a smaller scale. The Nova TV team, led by Mark Lehner and stonemason Roger Hopkins, conducted a three-week experiment to shed light on how ancient Egyptians could have moved massive stones using levers, sledges, and manpower. They built a pyramid six meters high by nine meters wide, consisting of a total of 162 cubic meters, or about 405 tons. It was made out of 186 stones weighing an average of 2.2 tons each. 12 quarrymen carved 186 stones in 22 days, and the structure was erected using 44 men. These experiments brought us closer to understanding the construction challenges our ancient ancestors faced. The Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the seven wonders of the world, continues to captivate our imagination. Estimates of the workforce size vary, with some suggesting up to 50,000 men were involved. However, recent studies propose a more manageable figure of around 14,000 to 40,000 workers. The Construction Management Study, led by Daniel, Mann, Johnson, and Mendenhall, presents intriguing insights into the construction process and timeline. Most archaeologists agree that only about 4,000 of the total workforce were laborers who quarried the stone, hauled blocks to the pyramid, and set the blocks in place. The tombs of supervisors contain inscriptions regarding the organization of the workforce. There were two crews of approximately 2,000 workers, subdivided into named gangs of 1,000. The gangs were divided into five phyles of 200 which were in turn split into groups of around 20 workers grouped according to their skills, with each group having their own project leader and a specific task. Jean-Pierre Houdin's internal ramp hypothesis offers a fresh perspective on how the Great Pyramid may have been built. His architectural model, combined with advanced 3D technology, suggests a plausible method of moving stones within the pyramid's structure. The internal grand gallery could have served as a trolley chute for counterbalance weights, aiding in the construction of the granite roof blocks. As we explore the evidence and theories, we cannot help but marvel at the astounding precision and engineering acumen displayed by the ancient Egyptians. The entire Giza plateau is believed to have been constructed over the reign of five pharaohs in less than a hundred years, which generally includes, the Great Pyramid, Khofre and Munkhoi's Pyramids, the Great Sphinx, the Sphinx, and Valley Temples, 35 boat pits cut out of solid bedrock, and several causeways, as well as paving nearly the entire plateau with large stones. The level of accuracy in the pyramid's construction, without the aid of modern tools, boggles the mind. It is a testament to the ingenuity and dedication of the builders. Recent discoveries at Hatnub provide fascinating insight into how ancient Egyptians moved massive alabaster stones using ramps on steep slopes. Such advanced knowledge of waterways and harbors facilitated the transportation of materials for pyramid construction. It truly was a well-orchestrated symphony of engineering and logistics. Our journey into the mysteries of ancient Egyptian pyramids has been nothing short of astounding. From the controversies surrounding the workforce to the ambitious pyramid building experiments, we've gained new perspectives on these magnificent structures. 
While the secrets of their construction may never be fully unraveled, it is clear that the ancient Egyptians possessed a level of knowledge and skill that continues to inspire and amaze us to this day. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting explorations into the wonders of the past. Until next time, keep exploring and keep wondering.